Hello again, everyone. Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, the source for all things North America, construction framing, softwood lumber, and panel OSBM plywood prices. Here we are uh, coming up to the end of June in Vancouver where we're having a heat wave like unprecedented ever in the world, like the highest temperature ever recorded in Canada in the history of time. And it's here on the west coast of British Columbia, which normally doesn't get hot. Um, it doesn't really get cold. Uh, it just rains a lot. So, um, dangerous levels of temperature in a place that is not used to it getting, like, hot even, let alone super hot. Uh, we're on the fourth day that initially they said uh, was just going to last a few days, but now they're saying um, through the long weekend. So I am making extra effort to do an update now because the dual Canada Day, uh, Independence Day in the U.S. long weekend is generally signals sort of a change in the season for the summer in terms of lumber sales and uh, housing construction because... Um, like I've been saying, usually by now the large builders, you know, uh, anybody doing a significant um, project has already ordered and indeed received their wood, which is true now. Um, after huge delays, uh, those of you who uh, check in regularly see that my latest update for the uh, lumber production in Canada, U.S. and the sawmill capacity utilization rates, which was for March, showed uh, returning to what we n know as normal. Uh, and so um, I'm just going to say April, May, and June will similarly show improvement over, you know, the whole past year when things were um, really down and um, production was struggling and uh, sawmill capacity really dropped. Two months last year uh, in March and in June really really dropped and took, you know, this whole time to recover. So where do I start? The uh, I had some very deep conversations on Twitter two weeks ago about drought. Um, U.S., West, and South is in a very, very serious drought, uh, continuing from last year. Now we have unbelievably record temperatures that in June. Um, we do get heat a little bit, not like this, for about three weeks, usually like the end of July or August. Um, so for British Columbia, in terms of wildfire, that depends on the snowpack. It doesn't matter what the weather is during the summer. If there is a good snowpack, then the wildfires will not be that bad. This year was unbelievable. We had an epic how, as the kids call it, at Whistler, everybody went skiing, at Big White in Kelowna, probably, you know, in the U.S. too, I'm sure, Washington State, Mount Baker, and such. So what I heard today is that the snowpack is melting. The snowpack is melting right now, and there's actually some flooding. So, like, if we get the normal hot weather July and August, and all the snow has melted, and there's no, it's drought up here, it's impossible to know. This is this is completely unprecedented. So people who've been um, watching and checking in with us frequently notice that uh, a while ago, a couple of months ago, I was sort of giving my opinion of all of these sudden expert lumber knowledgeable people who are getting like 500,000 views or whatever it is, 5 million views on their YouTube. <laughs> There's lumber everywhere. I can't believe the price. You know, they're showing you a video of logs. Like we had a conversation about that. Uh, I noticed that uh, it seems that those people who are telling you what's happening have dropped off. Um, today on my LinkedIn, there's actually a couple of p different people who were like, listen to the people who've been telling you we don't know. They're talking about futures because futures is going bananas. Of course it is. Uh, I've been telling you we don't know. I mean, I can tell you what what's happening right now and give you my opinion of 
what's going to come with the data for housing and stuff based on what I know about lumber right now. But I never told you what was going to happen in the future. I never said this is what's going to happen later this year, what the price is going to be, things like that, because we don't know. Like, we literally don't know. We didn't know last year what was happening at the time, and we don't know now. Now we know last year, and we've made adjustments. A lot of problems continue on the supply chain with the railways and stuff, but... Um, this year is this year, and nobody knows how the rest of this year is going to go. Nobody knew at the beginning of this year how the first half of this year is going to go. So let's quickly go to look at um, one of my graphs that I show you all the time, and then I'll explain a little bit more about what's happening with prices right now, the week before the Canada Day weekend, which is on Thursday, and the U.S. Independence Day, which is on Sunday and obviously going to be closed on Monday. So next week whole new ball game. I'll come back and give you updates as July happens. But right now, let's do a uh, midsummer wrap-up of the lumber market. Okay, so this is the benchmark uh, Western Spruce 2x4 price. I will be getting to Southern Pine. Someone was asking. I will get to that. But right now, we're going to stick to the uh, lumber commodity that sold in the highest volume by far, which uh, print last week, so for this week, was US $900 per thousand board feet. That's down 14% from the previous week when it was US $1,048 uh, and is down 44% from the month before when it was $1,618. Just to give you some perspective, this time last year prices were skyrocketing as would uh, be understood as historical. The price was $436, so this week it's up 106%. So this again is my table that I show every time, and you can see it on my website. I do hold back by a couple of weeks to give an advantage to the people who actually subscribe to the newsletter. Southern Pine, East Side 2x4, number 2 and better, $755 per thousand board feet, which is down 17% from the previous week when it was $915. That's down... 45% from one month ago when it was $1,364 per thousand board feet. And once again, compared to one year ago when prices were skyrocketing as we understood at the time, uh, Southern Yellow Pine 2x4 East Side number 2 and better was $525. So this week it's up 44% compared to that historical high of the time. Once again, my graph that I put on the website, uh, I would pay attention to that blue line ticking over. That's plywood. Prices are flat. There are many reasons for that, especially supply and demand. We don't know what's going to happen, but expect that to stay strong. So, so there you have, you know, a good capture of the first half of 2021. And uh, I've been explaining the situation on the ground as it happens. Uh, so what we've had over the past, you know, six weeks, two months is a lot of pushback from the customers where they're holding off on buying in the hopes that uh, the lumber prices will go down. A uh, very successful effort on their part. Um, the uh, tiny, tiny sales that did occur for those who just simply for some reason could not wait or didn't care what the price of the wood is going to be because they're just going to charge the home buying customer. I'm going to be getting on to uh, U.S. new home prices in my next video. Um, but everyone else holding off to uh, for the sawmills to lower their price, which they have. And uh, for the past week and uh, into this week for sure, looks like buying volumes are improving again. And so let's say, for example, this is what I've been sort of trying to get people to um, think of it. If you're a, a sawmill or a wholesaler or a reload and you're selling 10 rail cars at 1600 but now the price is down to 900 and you're going to sell 100 rail cars because people are not averse to this price. Um, so when you combine the lumber production volume, sawmill capacity rate improvement and the uh, lowering of the price from that, you know, epic, epic high, uh, you have a better supply-demand balance and a more equilibrium to the marketplace. People actually buying in volume again. Sawmills still running at a high volume. Price not as high, but sales volumes much higher. Um, so that's where we are right now. Um, feed stock is really good. Uh, first half of the video I talked about the fires. 
what we have all across North America for the entire past year is all the sawmills really loaded up on logs. So today, uh, the province of British Columbia announced a uh, campfire ban starting tomorrow to last until October. If there's a campfire ban, there's a fire ban. There's a road ban. Uh, no heavy equipment in the forest. No logging equipment, no trucks. So at this point, you know, all these things that have been happening that are unprecedented and uh, you can't plan for, or how can you plan for something that has never happened before? One thing the mills do know is stock up on logs. When prices fluctuate and like demand is kind of fluid, but it might only last a couple of months, the sawmills do not pack in their log yard, right? Um, if they can't go harvest in a couple of months for a little while, that's not a big deal. But being caught uh, at the end of the year with uh, too many logs that you paid for back in July, uh, that's a real problem. So this encouraged uh, viewpoint from my, where I'm looking that the sawmills know they are going to be producing to the end of this year and stocked up their yards, their log yards, as full as they could before anything uh, like wildfire or fire ban happened. That is encouraging for the rest of the year. Um, now, like I said, the combined Canada Day, Independence Day holiday usually signals kind of a, a shift, right? I mean, I'm sure people in other jurisdictions besides Vancouver are having, you know, warnings about uh, heat warnings to workers outside, all this kind of thing, you know, putting in a roof in uh, epic temperature is not safe. So at at the months that are to come in July and August, usually there's, you know, slowing down, but we don't know if that's going to happen this year or is the big building going to be in September if the entire continent is under, you know, we, again, we don't know. So I'll come back in a couple of weeks once um, I have that data and that market commentary. But for now, that is the first half of 2021. It's like we packed five years into one year. It's normally not this volatile by any means. And... Uh, my next video I'm going to do right now for um, U.S. home sales and house prices is very positive uh, and looking to stay that way. So stay tuned, come back, um, click the like or click subscribe to my YouTube, but really honestly go on my website, madisonsreport.com uh, and see the different products that we do and go to the subscribe link. I have it in my caption to get the full data every Friday morning. Uh, right away through your own login. There's a form to fill in. Uh, send me a um, request and we'll get you signed up.